Hey guys, welcome to another video and welcome to the RCS EV. Thanks for tuning in to another review of another car, today being Volkswagen's ID5. So before we get into it, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. So let's take this thing for a test drive and see what it's all about. The first thing you'll notice, and I'll put a little insert here, is that the pedals have got a pause on the brake and a play button on the accelerator. It's just a little reminder from my Germans that they still have a sense of humour. But otherwise, controls are up here. I've already used the wipers about three times to drive it because I keep going back to the old ways, really. But here we go. So first of all, first things first that I noticed there is that I know this is the single motor model, but the regen it didn't exist. It just wasn't there. It is set to regen, but it just didn't do it. I mean, I've driven a single motor version of a Tesla and that gave a little bit more braking than this did, but that was nothing. So first things I've noticed, as with a lot of other cars compared to uh, Teslas, is that the ride quality is definitely better. And actually, compared to the Mustang Mach-E that I did last week, link in the, in the description now, this one's got a lot less road noise when you bring up the speed. I mean, wind noise from this pillar in particular. That was a big thing that I found with the mach -E, and that's an expensive car, a lot more expensive than this. But I'll get on to price towards the end of the video, but handling-wise, yeah. It's doing pretty well. It has got quite chunky tyres on it, so that's kind of going to help it. But otherwise, I'd say it handles like any other normal kind of hatchback saloon car, that kind of thing. Visibility is good. The wing mirrors are huge. They're massive. Probably about as big as that lorry that just went past. Yeah, they're really big, these wing mirrors. It's not a criticism. I like it. I really like a good view out of the car. So that's really good. This pillar's quite small. They've kind of shaped it a little bit, which is good. The rear window, you can actually see out of it, which again is good job. Yeah, good visibility. Just starting to get a little bit of road noise there from these tires. When you go over a surface that isn't quite smooth, it's just getting a little bit of noise feedback. Nothing to write home about, but it's just noticeable. So if you live somewhere where the roads are generally quite pitted and uneven, then that could start to get a little bit annoying. But comfort-wise, the seat's pretty good. I mean, this is the basic one they've given me to test drive. It's a shame, but that's just what it is. It's quite comfortable. And as I was mentioning about his armrest, that's... Well, OK. This is about where I would have it. And it's quite comfortable there. It rests on me there. But with this steering wheel currently at its lowest, my other arm... With it all the way back, I kind of struggled to actually reach the steering wheel. It's like I'd have to drive kind of crooked just to reach the steering wheel. And I don't know if that's whether this armrest is too low or I'm sat. I mean, I do sit quite high, so that could be why. But yeah, it feels like this armrest over here just needs to be a bit closer to me and a little bit higher. And that'd be a lot better. But the materials in here, squidgy. Bit of cost saving on this one bit more there that's a nice squidgy bit uh, down here what up here the actual headlining why have they done that so this headlining kit lovely really nice material and then I don't get why all EVs have decided let's give them really crap materials that's really nice that isn't I don't know why they couldn't have made that the same because it kind of transitions across. My X4 that I had before this, that had this kind of roof lining and it was down the A-pillar as well. So, bit of a negative there for Volkswagen. You're just cutting a corner that just doesn't need really cutting. So it's got quite a nice kind of a suede material down here. I'm, I'm not touching myself. I'll do it up here instead to show you. It's a nice suede kind of material in the seat and the 
a leather on the sides. It's quite a nice, to be honest. Same with the front, it's this kind of grey leather with a nice white bit of stitching on it. I mean, performance-wise, I've already had my foot down in this. The acceleration is probably on par with... I've test-driven a Model 3 single motor and... The acceleration's probably on par. There's no lag with it, it's just instant, it's going. And I can only really hear a whining from the back, which suggests it's definitely is only a single motor. But yeah, the regen was quite good above 60, but from about... 40 onwards it's really quite slow at doing it above 50 it's kind of doing full regen but at 30 it's it's given me a maximum of half i don't know why if anyone knows please leave a comment so that it can be shared with the rest of us yeah it's pretty comfortable it's pretty smooth just coming up to a bit of dual carriageway so we'll see what it's like when we open it up Get it up to 70, see what it's all about there. Now, obviously, I'm not testing it for pure acceleration. It's 0 to 60, somewhere around 8 seconds. It's not fast. I would have had the exact number, but unfortunately, I thought I was getting a dual motor and they've given me the cheap single one, so I haven't got it off the top of my head. So, yeah, the 0 to 60, I think, is around 8 seconds, but I'll just write it down here to show you what it actually is. We're doing 30, instant pickup. It's up to 60. It's got enough. I wouldn't say it's got a sporty amount, but it, it's it got enough poke to it. For a long distance drive, actually, I think this would probably be fine, absolutely fine. But the difference between this and the ID4, I'll just put a little comparison at the bottom, is purely the back so the id5 slopes it more so it's basically the id4 for someone who is more stylish but wants less pra practicability is that a word a more stylish but less practical car let's leave it as that that's what this car is for i'd say it's a damn good looking car i mean it's a really good looking car, Volkswagen has done a really good job here. This is a basic one with, we've only got the smaller alloys, but yeah, it's a really good car. That's my first thought. It's got some really nice lines down the side of it. It's really good. I like these lights here. They're really cool. As I say, it's a basic one, so it hasn't got an electric boot on it, but in the boot itself yeah it's a fairly good size to be honest i'd say it's on par with the tesla size they've done a bit better than the other people they have got some storage spaces down here under the oh, and then it all goes wrong doesn't it or is there another bit there is that's not too bad actually i mean it's probably about half the size of the one in the tesla but it's quite cool that you've got a double height floor in here so you can put stuff underneath there or you just take this one out all together and boom you've got a much bigger floor through the middle you've got a da -da, little ski hatch that's pretty handy proper parcel shelf you've got lights in here little load hooks tesla take note everywhere so you can actually restrain stuff in here and they even give you this little cargo net as well so yeah, boot size wise, it's pretty good actually. Obviously in the more specced out models, you will get a electric tailgate. A little split boy spoiler here, see, hand goes all the way through. But yeah, the, the white and black actually looks quite good on it, to be honest. Standard Volkswagen charging port here, there it is. Nothing special to sort of report home about. Interior wise, wow, back doors really do open really wide. So if you've got kids or something big that you need to put in here, you can have no problems. In the back itself, first thing with all these EVs nowadays, it's completely flat floor. Fantastic. You've got the clippy things here for your wee baba. And that's in my driving position there. I mean... Yeah, it's really good. There's really good support for my legs here. I 
they're not held up in any way, the seat supports them completely. Really good space in the back here. One thing that I like, I don't know if it'll work if the ignition is not on. No, it won't, hold on. Bear with me. A few moments later. But we've got this really cool sunroof here, so it's like a kind of slidey switch. You just rub your finger along it, and back it comes. That's brilliant. Headroom wise, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm your average height male, you know, 5'10-ish and change, and there's a little bit in here. I think if you were six foot or taller, you'd actually struggle quite a bit. You know, headrest is quite good once it's clicked up. Yeah, if you're if you're more than six foot, you, you're going to struggle in here quite quite a bit. But there's nice little touches in it. We've got a little uh, coat hanger hook in here, an actual coat hook here as well. Climate controls in the rear, Tesla. Two USB-C charging ports, really nice. The middle seat itself. It sits a bit higher, so your head's even higher up here. So if you're anything taller than me, you know, 5'10", you're gonna struggle. I've probably got an inch, maybe two at generous left, but it's actually not too uncomfortable. I think with three of you in here, you could probably just about survive a short journey. Yeah, it's not bad. I'll give it a not bad. Let's go to the front. Oh, you're kidding me. I've managed to lock myself in. I locked myself in, had child locks on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so door handles, they're kind of smooth as well, like most cars, it's, a, it's just a little sensor on the back of the door handle there. Inside, really nice view out the front. The bonnet is quite long and it's quite hard to see the end of it, but it's a really nice view. The screen, I have not, amazingly good at these at the moment so i found it quite hard to work out where aha uh -huh. he says this is where all the settings and things are it's it's not too bad to be honest it's fairly intuitive like any car you'll get used to it eventually you've got a little screen here with all your your sat nav when you need it speed etc all your driving controls but otherwise all the controls in here, very standard. If you have a Volkswagen, it's all the same. Get nice big drinks holders here, get a big cup in there. You've got a wireless phone charging pad down here. More storage down here for cups and stuff. Quite handy, they've got these kind of inserts. But the only um, problem with the inserts is they have to go in these little lugs. So they can only really go in two places, which is a bit of a shame, you could do with a few more bits in there just so it's more customizable. I like this, this is good, so it's a, I don't know who would drive like that, but <clears throat> maybe a lorry driver, who knows. You've got a nice armrest with loads of different height adjustable settings on it. Glove box, it's kind of a strange looking shape to be honest. I don't know what you'd manage to fit there, but you've only really got half a glove box at best, which is a bit of a shame. You know, we'll get over it. So let's check out the frunk, the fruit, whichever you want to call it, and see what it's like compared to other cars. It's a bit of a shame, like a lot of other ones I'm seeing, you've got like a handle you've got to pull here. There's no, there's no button on the screen or on your phone or anything. It's, it's more of a manual kind of thing. And as before, it's a, you've got to find a latch to actually get it open. Bloody hell, it's it's not supported oh dear that's why it's not supported there is no space in here at all you might i think that's maybe big enough for a can of coke and that's about it it's almost like a traditional car in here there is literally no space whatsoever that's a big miss from volkswagen really big miss because you can see there's a lot of space underneath and they're just right to yell. that's down it's just not used it So the big bit, the price. This car today, the ID5 Style, which is the one that I've got, it's the basic one, 50,000 pounds. 
that for a basic one of these, that's only three grand less than a dual motor Model Y. That's not good. Would I get this? A very basic. I've got no seat controls, no keyless entry. I haven't got a lot of what I would call optional extras on this car. And it's only 3,000 less than a Tesla. No. I get the Tesla all day long. The one up from this, the tech, which gives you a head-up display, keyless entry, um, electric seats, nicer seats. It jumps a bit. That's 54,000. So that's 1,000 more than the Model Y. So the tech is probably the same kind of car as the Model Y in terms of its um, gadgets and spec level and I should say that all of these ones the style the tech and the GTX they all have a 77 kilowatt battery so all of the ID5 range that's the style the tech and the GTX they all come with a 77 kilowatt hour battery so very similar to what you'll find in a Model Y not far off and that should give it a range of about 300, 330 miles. Again, pretty much the same as the Tesla. Although the GTX, I think because the wheels, the same as on the Model Y, where you change the wheels, you get a little bit less range. That's where the GTX comes in. So thanks for tuning in to my video all about the ID5. I hope you found it useful. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. God, how do I disable this? Um, that one? Ooh, I did it. Oh, I tore it out, didn't I? This is going fantastic.